coming up on Millennial. You drink exclusively hot coffee. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. On two fronts. Millennial front and the gay front. Not to invalidate your sexuality, but are you sure? If anyone said, I crave a seductive time to me, I'd block them. I'd say goodbye. Andrew, this is the same girl. Make sure that I We both got the same girl coming (laughs) after us. Damn. But you know what? If you want to, you could give Andrew and I both tips on how we could be utilizing our platforms better because Lord knows I also don't use this stuff as much as I should. Neither of you have reached your full social media potential. Oh, I know. Because we're in our flop era. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe that's my problem. Welcome to Millennial, the home of fake adulting, but real talk. I'm Andrew. And I'm Pamela. And Laura couldn't make it this week. We'll discuss why in a moment. We might have a theory or two. Today is 420 after all. But our dear friend and social media manager, Chloe, is back on the show. Welcome back, Chloe. Hi, y'all. It's good to be back. These are always Great so much to have fun. You. you were an instant hit the last time you were on the show. No Aww. surprise. Chloe is a lot of fun. It was just your birthday yesterday, right? It was my birthday, and I consider it successful. I do very much feel like a 20-something now. Like, it's such a, it's just a blase year. There's no fun Taylor Swift song attached to it. (laughs) I am just, you know, good old 23. (laughs) I'm sorry. We hired her when she was 22. That's even more painful. Go ahead. I'm happy for you. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. And I will say I didn't cry this year. And I wanted to say that hot girls cry on their birthdays. And I had been crying almost every year since I started college. And I think it was maybe the expectation of having the perfect birthday or, you know, the impending death. I'm not sure what it was. That's why you would cry. I assumed it was because like there was so much love being sent (laughs) way. It was just overwhelming. No, it's because you thought you were going to die soon. Well, okay. So the last two birthdays I've had had been in the pandemic. I actually turned 21 at the height of the pandemic. Um, so I wasn't oh, able to go to damn. bars. Um, oh. I went to Target and bought a beer and that was like my alcohol purchase. <laughs> um, and I spent the night, I, I had an amazing bubble bath and then I watched Cars, the Disney movie, and that was my 21st birthday. <laughs> um, so for 23, I decided to not have expectations and I went to dinner with my family and we went shopping and it was wonderful. And I didn't cry. <laughs> nice. Good job. We're, we're happy you. for you. Thank you. <laughs> so, well, speaking of being 23, we will return to our uh, Gen Z discussions like we did the last time that you were on in a moment. But before we do that, I wanted to bring up a little news item. A Trump appointed federal judge in Florida overturned the countrywide mask mandate on public transportation. This occurred on Monday. Numerous major airlines repealed their mask requirements very quickly. Pam, you actually saw a dumb tweet from Alaska Airlines about this, right? I did, yeah. So the the copy was actually kind of nice, you know, because they made sure to let passengers know that the choice was theirs in terms of to mask or not to mask. But it was just the you know, blatant stock image model photo that they chose because it's this super cheesy looking flight attendant who's got this big smile on their face. And then because they have to, you know, really push this whole masks can be off if you want to, this person is like halfway done taking (laughs) their mask off. And yeah, and she's staring directly into the camera yeah, with exactly. a grin. And I'm just, I was thinking to myself, like, somebody, somebody got hired to do this. Somebody was directed to do this. <laughs> somebody thought yeah. that this was a stock, good idea. Stock photos of people in masks feels so apocalyptic. Like, oh, it yeah. just feels so wrong to see a stock photo of someone in a mask. And I'm like, yeah, OK, so we've been doing this for two years and it's our reality. But it feels so wrong. 
Yeah. I know. I know. You know, I had a friend, too, that was flying back from California to Denver on Monday night. And this was right after, I guess, this was announced. And so they made she was on a plane that made an in-flight announcement about how people could remove their masks if they wanted to. And she said, I asked her, I said, did you take your mask off? And she goes, are you kidding me? I was on a plane full of Coachella festival goers. I was not going to sit in a tin can breathing that air. (laughs) She would like, I don't know. She's a little paranoid about it. I get it. Yeah. A lot of people are upset about this. Some people think it's too soon. And it did come down to, like I said, a Trump judge. It's also like, it's all it was going to take this whole time was one judge overturning this mandate. That was surprising. And it feels like the Biden administration was caught with their pants down. They didn't seem to anticipate this, which also feels very Trumpian to me. <laughs> but a lot of people are upset by this news. They think it's too soon. It's dangerous for people who are immunocompromised or um, young people, people under five who still can't get a vaccination. So the reaction to this news has been very mixed. Pam, to your point about people on planes learning about this news while flying, I've seen some video clips of people like celebrating on board as the pilots like, and we just found out the mandate has been repealed. So take them off, baby. And everybody's like, woohoo. I also, I some, I often take people's first accounts on Twitter with a grain of salt, but I also saw somebody tweeting about how Delta was passing out free champagne for this and I'm yeah, like I don't know that's not to be celebrated not, but if it is in poor taste free well, champagne is free champagne though like hello <laughs> I know but in poor t- I think it's in poor taste kind of because doesn't it make you feel a little pressured yeah. to take your mask off if you had already decided to keep it on yes no not me okay. I'm taking that free oh. champagne I'm pulling down my mask taping a sip <laughs> pulling it back up I will be wearing a okay, mask you know that's what? That is the way to do it forever yeah, that's fair yes okay, I mean we already I guess we already do that um, when we go to restaurants now or like tinier cafes. Right, which has been so bullshit. But I think Pam's point is that it shouldn't be celebrated that we no longer have to wear a mask. Is that your point? I think so. I think so, especially because, you know, and I've been like kind of struggling with this as well. Obviously, everybody's kind of getting ready for another wave of COVID. But I don't know if we're ever going to get like news of that because they sent out all of these at home test kits. How many people are not reporting that they tested positive? Oh yeah. You know? So it's kind of like false and falsifying information of just how bad things still are potentially in the country. So yeah. Well, I mean, take my sister. She got COVID over Christmas. She did one of those at home tests to verify. She didn't call the state or anything. And I mean, many people are just like her. I didn't even think of that. That's so true. Yeah. Like, Why you, know, would you? you don't have to tell anyone necessarily right. how many people are get, testing positive for COVID and then saying, fuck it and going out anyway yeah. and doing whatever they want. Right. And not to sound like yeah. two conspiracy theorists, but then you think about how the government was issuing all of these tests for free. So then you kind of think, like, is it because they just want to get back to normal? And so then people not having to go to test sites that log who came in and got tested and who tested positive, like it was, was like that, uh, you know, <laughs> that is a conspiracy I theory. I don't Maybe know if I subscribe that the to record. that. I'm not but... trying to give more fodder or no, like, no, fire. It's okay. to you know what? Theories, I'm into but... it. Yeah. I'm I don't know. <laughs> I think it was a nice gesture to make tests more accessible yeah. to everybody across the country, especially or... if maybe you, can't afford or maybe them. we just want to open no, back up more already. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Pam really wants to get back to her concerts. I just I trust <laughs> no one anymore. This is <laughs> this is what it comes down to. True. That's fair. So valid. So I so Laura did go somewhere this week. I don't know where she went. I wonder if she flew. When she flew, presumably the mask mandate was still in place. When she comes back, the mask mandate will not be in place. So I cannot wait to hear about Laura's experience. Assuming she flew again, she may have driven somewhere. Who knows? But do you two know where Laura is? I don't know. She didn't tell me. That's oh, I mean, to be fair, I didn't ask, but I wonder if we should like text her and be like, hey, so. Why do none of us know? I don't know. <laughs> well, I figured we would ask on the show after oh, she's for back. The show, Hashtag of for the show. Yeah, for and I mean, the it's show. her voca- vacation. It's not really our. Watch her be like, I didn't go anywhere. I just needed a break from the bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> from, from y'all. <laughs> She's like, I had a staycation. The Biden administration had recently extended this mask mandate, but only to May 3rd. So it seemed like they were maybe considering dropping it next month. By the way, the Department of Justice will now be appealing this ruling out of Florida because the CDC does want to extend the mandate. So who knows how long they want to keep it on. I think the reason airlines jump so quick to pull down this mask mandate was because they know travelers really hate it and it probably aggravates a lot of the travelers on board. So they're doing this to look out for the flight attendants who are sick of dealing with all this so shit as well. True. And and I get it from that perspective. And maybe it's a big selling point now. Maybe people haven't wanted to fly because they don't want to wear a mask. So maybe oh, that's another reason. That, I anyway, told you capitalism is king. <laughs> this whole situation is pretty messy right now. The mask mandate may be put back in place, but I don't know if people are going to have the patience for it. They won't have a choice. This not only applies to planes, but it also applies to trains. And I'm yep. on the train often, um, the Amtrak specifically. And when I don't have anyone next to me, it's pretty far distance from the other person. When you're in a plane, you're like sardines. You're next to that person. Ugh. You're breathing on each other. It's super awkward. Your legs touch a lot. Like you're close mm. to that person. When you are on Amtrak and you're just sitting there alone without anyone next to you, you're pretty well distanced. I do not think I will be wearing wearing a mask on the Amtrak train. I will definitely be wearing a mask in planes just because that way I can sleep with my mouth open. No one looks at me weird. I can, <laughs> I can, you know, just, <laughs> I can hide my pimples, whatever it is. Like I will be wearing a mask on planes, but not on the Amtrak trains anymore. So this is more of a vanity issue for you. It's not to protect no, yourself well, from the okay. virus. Well, I want to, <laughs> No, for me, it's protecting others. I don't really care about myself in this situation. It's more for vulnerable people, like you said earlier. I've had right. COVID twice. I oh had zero symptoms both times. I'm not particularly afraid for myself. But like I said, wearing a mask is not just for you. It's for others as well. So absolutely. Um, uh, that's why I'll be wearing it on planes. But uh, on trains when I'm like, usually six feet apart from someone. Hell no. And by the way, some states are still saying, well, actually, you do have to keep your mask on on trains, on buses, etc. It varies depending on the state. But Pam, have you been on a plane since the beginning of the pandemic? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking I about haven't. that the other day. Like, I can't remember a no, time. No. Not that I know your I mean, life like that the, well. There but... were, like there were a couple of offers put on the table, but I just didn't. Honestly, I didn't feel comfortable. And it would have just been like, they would have been longer flights, to be honest. And okay. I don't know if I could have done that. Specifically, like my stepmom was offering to like for some of us to go see our sisters in Hawaii. And that's that's a very long time to be on a plane. Hawaii. Yeah. yeah. And then also you have to go like, to Hawaii. Yeah, because Hawaii's gonna be there after. <laughs> so I can go <laughs> okay, to true. Hawaii, but, true. And then also like with but... the with like the quarantining too, that it was I just didn't feel right to to go when they were doing all of that other stuff and then yeah yeah, yeah. there's actually Rain a lot Hawaii. around Hawaii right now yeah like the resources yeah. are being drained I, I get know. that I know so yeah that's what's going on there we'll see what happens with uh Laura if she did fly and if this mask mandate is put back in place I suspect there's a good chance that it will so since Chloe's here let's do our Gen Z check-in we want to see <laughs> What the There's hot a trends lot of are. new words, to be honest. At first, when you said this, I was like, uh oh, maybe there isn't new stuff for me to tell them. And I was like, oh, my gosh, yes, there is. <laughs> and we have to do this check in because things change so rapidly. Chloe was like, Chugi is in. Oh, and now Chugi is out. Like, Chugi I is we out. I OK, uh, that's a bummer because <laughs> I just got used to using it when you told me Chugi was out. Yeah. But, using so Chugi is Chugi. <laughs> <laughs> Should have seen that coming. So what are the hottest Gen Z words and phrases at the moment? What should Pam and I be be up on right now? So I I'm the first thing I'm going to tell you is my favorite words, the words that I'm using that you can start incorporating in your vocabulary so you can sound hip and young. OK, um, grabbing my pen and paper. <laughs> yes, exactly. So one of my favorite things to say right now is it's serving. Like it's serving, it's okay. serving, like it's serving 
fashion. It's serving, well, C word usually is a big one. Can I say the C word on this show? Yeah, I don't care. It's serving cunt is a really big one in the gay <laughs> in the gay community, especially. Really? Yes, wow. which is a good one. I really like <laughs> fold. Have you guys heard fold? No. It's like if you find someone super attractive, you would fold for them, like fold over. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Kind of like folding cards. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, oh my gosh, Anthony from Bridgerton. Like, I'd fold. It almost means like bend over. No, that's exactly what it means, Andrew. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I use hot girl walk all the time. Like I'm always, I'm always on a hot girl walk. A hot girl walk specifically is a four mile walk where you have your headphones in. You're only allowed to think good (laughs) thoughts about yourself or manifest good. And you always have a water bottle and you're, you know, you look good. So a hot girl walk. I go on them all the time. I'm going to start doing this when I walk. You should. It's good for you. You're (laughs) laughing, Andrew, but it's good for you. I mean, no, I feel I'm like just, positive I, thoughtless amazing. and my therapist is always trying to get me to do positive thoughts. <laughs> so maybe this is the way to do it. And I like how it's specifically four miles. Yeah. Maybe you take like a, a mild hot girl walk and you, how long you is do that? one mile walk or something like that. But everyone should incorporate it. This sounds like a business opportunity. We got to redo the millennial water bottles and label, you know, put like hot, hot girl, girl walk on yeah. it. Yeah. You know yeah. what? They're perfect. <laughs> they are perfect for your hot girl walk, everyone. So this week, after you listen to this episode and you're inspired to take a hot girl <laughs> walk, make sure you bring along your poor if dumpster fire millennial blue water bottle it's fabulous <laughs> and send send pictures tag and us send so that pictures, Chloe can tag re- us. Yes. Blo- retweet we love a good stuff. plug we love a good plug <laughs> i will t- i will do that on one of my hot girl mild hot girl walks because i don't take brooklyn four miles but i also don't take jasper four miles so it's gonna be like a hot girl light walk. like i said light <laughs> l-i-t-e okay um i really like coldest like she's the coldest which actually kind of means she's the hottest. Like a bitch? No. Oh. <laughs> coldest, coldest means hottest. Like icy. She's um, the coldest meaning like cool. She's like super um, the it girl. It, can, it guy. Whatever you want. Like I could say Andrew's the coldest and be like, oh, he's super cool. I don't get I don't like that one. Because well, normally when you say cold, it's like they have a cold personality. They're they're bitter. They're they're mean. Sh- yeah, sure. And it also means that context, baby, context. Can somebody who's cold take a hot girl walk? Yeah. That doesn't seem yes. really mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. hot girl and cold. Okay. You can't. It's like you can be both. You can be both. Maybe it depends on the day. OK. And then this one Pam used recently on her Twitter. But flop era. Did I use it correctly? Yes, you did. <laughs> it was excellent. And it made me think that I needed to talk about it on the show. Um, first of all, you are I'd like to clarify, Pam, you're not in your flop era. And I refuse to accept that. OK. <laughs> There's a few people in their flop era. I'd say that Kanye is probably in his flop era. I'd say that Lord is probably in her flop era. Uh, yeah you know i was gonna i was about to kind of say something mean about lord but then i remembered pam said she's going to see her soon so i don't know if i (laughs) I should i'm going to see her Uh but listen 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 um lord does not tour very often and the last time i saw her was in 2013 in new york city so i know she was in her hit area era then (laughs) oh that was probably like the first show she ever did in the u.s yeah well so what i was gonna say was lord uh the latest album isn't that good no, no but you know what era. but yeah so but the thing is is like melodrama was good and it was really hard to top pure heroin yeah so i think we all kind of knew but but the problem is is that the expectations were so high for lord that i feel like that contributed to people feeling like solar power is True. a flop especially because it's not yeah it's like tonally is not like what she's put out before she's happy is, now have you seen those bold. tweets yeah like lord's she happy is. and her music's bad <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens every time yeah i mean Catherine in the discord put jkr's in her flop era yeah i think she's gonna be <laughs> in her flop era for the rest of her life Catherine. probably yeah <laughs> All right, thank you for updating us. I'm I'm shook by a, shook. by some of these. Jemima wants to one. know 
<laughs> Jemima wants to know, okay, but as a 30-year-old, if I say these words in conversation, is that super lame? I think that it's all about owning it. If you own the word and you're, you know, I never think that it's weird when Pam, you know, throws in a Gen Z phrase. But if you do it incorrectly, yeah, you're going to look lame. So make sure you're using <laughs> using it correctly. Make sure you know what you're talking about. I would say that the easiest one to incorporate out of the ones I just said was hot girl walk. Can't go wrong there. Yeah. So I thought now that you've spent six months with us and you actually, fun fact, Chloe didn't listen to Millennial prior to being hired. She had actually recently just become a MuggleCast listener. Oh, my God. You're exposing at the time, me. I think. <laughs> Well, I, it's interesting, and I think it sets up the question I'm about to ask you. So you didn't listen to the show before we hired you. What's the most millennial thing each of us do now that you've come to know us? I will say Millennial is an amazing show, and I'm sad I didn't listen to it before. But Aww. And I will say I am actually glad, though, that I was able to get to know you as more of like a friend rather than a fan, if that makes sense. like Because I, I'm an asshole on the show. No, boo-boo. I think you're wonderful off show, on show. Um, okay. An asshole, sure, but I love it. So <laughs> I am too. Um, <laughs> but I think that for me, it was good because I didn't like have you in this picture of my head as like, oh, I'm a huge fan. I wasn't like super nervous, if that makes sense. I might have Yeah, been. you're coming into it clean. Yeah. I wasn't like, oh my God, Andrew's talking to me right now. <laughs> this is uh. crazy. <laughs> Um, uh -huh. but you guys are very millennial and not to say that I don't do millennial things, but Andrew, Andrew is by far the most millennial of the millennial hosts. Huh. I've been asked what the most millennial thing is. I came up with so many. So the <laughs> first one we're going to get right off the bat. This is Laura, Pam, Andrew, and even myself, but being a part of the Harry Potter fandom, especially in the way that you, Andrew, Pam, and Laura were. Hello, super millennial. Does not get more millennial than that. Okay. Um, well, right. Because we grew up with Harry Potter. Yeah. It, we were in just the right age bracket when the books first started coming out. Yes. So, yeah. 100%. And Gen Z, like for some reason, and I'm obviously not a part of this, um, I'm also, you know, millennial in this way. Um, Gen Z thinks that, you know, identifying with your Hogwarts house and being obsessed with Harry Potter is weird. Um, to which I say, huh. fuck that. Um, yeah. <laughs> but that is a thing. Um, your pet Instagram. You have an Instagram for your pet, Andrew. Yes. Yeah. At Brooklyn Doodle Dog on Instagram. <laughs> he has 351 followers. I'm going to turn him yeah. into an influencer. I got to start. You off totally with... should. Yeah, he's got he's the gorgeous. face for it. Yeah. Yeah. And I will say, like, even though it is, I follow it. So <laughs> Good. Maybe I... <laughs> You drink exclusively hot coffee. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. On two fronts, millennial front and the gay front. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's true. Gays <laughs> drink iced coffee. That's the thing that they do. Mm -hmm. The cold brews. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pat does Not that. to invalidate your uh, sexuality, but are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I think I'm straight. Sometimes I think I'm straight. I have straight tendencies. Oh my gosh. Don't give all the fangirls that chance again. I kind of want to buy a truck. What? Oh, ooh. <laughs> you are, are you going to be one of those like handyman gays? You know? <laughs> I don't Gay know. Gay in maybe. a truck. Yeah. I love that. That's I'm pretty straight that. of me. I'm on my quest. Wait. Goes from Tesla to truck. Well, hmm. an electric truck. That's what I was thinking. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh God, that you know what? That is really gay. Getting an electric okay, truck. Okay, then is never really mind. Gay. Never mind. Um, being a Disney adult. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> oof. Wow. Pam and I are both I insulted love, by that. No, one. I love Disney adults. I am one myself. Again, super millennial Gen Z will do nothing but make fun of these people. So those are your top millennial things, Andrew. I think you really own the millennial essence. It's probably why you're, you know, you created this show. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we love you anyway. And I want to say that even though you have all these millennial things, you're all Gen Z approved. Oh, that's Wait, so sweet. Let me get a stamp. Gen Z approved <laughs> stamp. <laughs> Pam. Yes. Harry Potter fandom. We already went over that. 
millennial AF. The polka dots is a little millennial. I don't know if I can explain this one, except just polka dots feel millennial. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I think that it pairs along with twee fashion, which you've talked about before, I think, in After Dark. Um, yes. But I think twee fashion is very millennial. I think twee fashion was at its height when millennials were in their 20s. Um, and the Zoe de Chanel aesthetic that you do beautifully. Oh, thank I you. Add. Thank you. She is she mm-hmm. is a style yeah. icon in my eyes. So it's yeah, <laughs> it's a little millennial. Um, the wine drinking, <laughs> being into wine, uh-huh. uh, wine's pretty millennial. I don't Gen Z like some, you know, some of us are into wine. Um, we but we make fun of it a lot. Is it all about the hard seltzer with the Gen Z ears? um i think it's been i think it's like binge drinking um to fill the existential dread but that could also just be like you know gen z's 20 in their 20s and younger so we're still binge drinking millennials do that too binge drink oh okay oh you know what andy does on his weekends (laughs) no well (laughs) depends on what your definition of binge is i guess white claws white claws are probably the drink that defines gen z or older gen z's like myself i think that white claw was just at the height of rage um, that's so funny because i know uh, millennials are obsessed with hard seltzers too does that make it less cool no. Okay. No. Okay. Millennials liking something doesn't immediately make Gen Z hate it. It feels like <laughs> it sometimes. <laughs> no. Okay. No. You know what? Like Gen Z makes fun of millennials, but at the end of the day, I think that a lot of Gen Z recognize that millennials paved the way for us to be the way that we are. Mm-hmm. Um, and to be fair, like we're the closest in age. We have the closest, you know, stereotypes, closest ways of being. That's just how that goes. So, no, we don't hate millennials. We're not trying to start a generation war. But, yeah, I think I think we do make fun of some things that millennials make fun of, just like you guys probably made fun of stupid Gen X stuff. Yeah, definitely. That's a good Mm -hmm. point. The side part, Pam, we already went over that. I have a side part, too. (laughs) Um, You know, some people just don't have the face shape to rock a middle part. And Gen Z needs to hop off their high horse about middle parts get over it um and then worshiping coffee shops did you add this pam it's a great point no, i added it i Andrew. added it yeah pam, oh, pam is so into coffee shops coffee shop culture you know gilmore it's, girls it's, and the well, coffee it's also shop because like i worked in co- I, I worked at a coffee shop for a while yeah. so it's yeah. like kind of like ingrained especially this is gonna make me sound probably like it's adding to your point i because i was working in craft coffee specifically it's like you kind of get swept <laughs> up in that culture even if you don't want to you know because then Mm -hmm. like everybody you know is doing that and then like everybody knows every other shop it's it's like its own little world it's crazy (laughs) and the reason i added it is because i just can't picture gen zers like of course they get coffee of some sort but i just can't picture gen zers like being all about coffee shops in the same way um I, you know what? I actually think that Gen Z does get into coffee shops, not in like the blatant hipster way that millennials did. <laughs> um, but I think that we still appreciate like a really good coffee shop. I think we're really into like artisan drinks like that Ooh. have lavender in them or some, you know, bullshit like that. Matcha. Gen Z likes That's, matcha. You gotta go to a hipster coffee shop for that. Stuff. Yeah, exactly. Gen Z's really actually also into Asian flavors in drinks. Like, like we just ube. Like, are obsessed. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Ube is definitely one of them. But no, no, I think Pam is giving hipster a little bit. I don't think I really it goes. It clicked listen, it goes with the now. twee aesthetic. So I guess you yes, know. <laughs> I was about to say, mm-hmm. and I I decided to give Laura just a, a shout out, even though she's not here. Um, Laura has given into the man. Uh, she is a corporate job. <laughs> this is what I laugh my ass <laughs> off at. Laura, right, which is gives funny because she's band. like the least. The least, you know, she's like very anti capitalism. She's like, you know, <laughs> really gung ho, liberal, but she's given in to the man. But she Chloe, has. people have to give in to the man to get a I job. I agree with you. Okay, I'm just okay. saying it's kind of millennial for her. And I will say, Andrew and Pam being, you know, making your own schedule, being freelancers, that's like super 
Gen Z and cool of you. Yes. Like everyone wants that. Yeah. And Laura and I both have given into the man. I've also given to the man. I, I work for say. nonprofit, but you know, it's still it's okay. you know, sitting at a desk. Blech. But you were telling and us you work also... your own hours, right? There's a lot of yeah, flexibility. Yeah, so yeah. well, I make my own rules. That's how that goes. <laughs> um <laughs> and I will say, um, Laura's emo past is pretty millennial. The hair you know the <laughs> the emo bands, the hot topic liking. That's all pretty millennial. Jemima said Laura's serving capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> I liked Catherine. It's serving millennial. Look, everyone's doing so good at incorporating these new terms. Yes. I'm so proud of you. Good job, uh, everybody. Patrons. <laughs> Fabulous. Fabulous and job. Uh, finally, millennial itself is millennial. Is yeah, that <laughs> yeah, millennial. The millennial show's pretty millennial. I think that goes without saying. But even the tagline, Gen Z has decided that the world word adulting is stupid and we hate it. Oh, uh -oh. Um, and it's quite literally in our tagline. So <laughs> we couldn't get more millennial than that. Which you know what? Success, Andrew and Pam. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> good branding okay We've i'm not saying it. fake adulting but real talk anymore i guess at the start no, of the show i don't want to turn that. off the gen z ears so cute okay no well, screw them screw knowing the gen, gen z ears. it's gonna come back in style again right adulting True. will be cool at some point give it give it 10 years and it'll be ironically cool <laughs> Chloe, you're going to quiz us on a couple of Gen Z items, right? I am. And I actually even went to my Instagram followers, mostly Gen Zers, and asked them to confuse y'all. <laughs> um, they came up with crazy words that are so obscure. And like, yes, I knew them, but I was like, oh, God, I can't do this to Andrew and Pam. <laughs> so I, I gave you like the inter intermediate ones. Okay. So the, the warm up is a Gen Z culture question. Which of these pieces of hashtag millennial culture did Gen Z not cancel? So we've canceled a lot of millennial things <laughs> that you like. We've just talked about this. But what did we not cancel? A, skinny jeans. B, Twilight. C, BuzzFeed. Sorry, Jemima. And D, <laughs> Rose Gold. Oh, man. Not cancel. So Not cancel. I want I want to say Twilight because Twilight has made a comeback. That would be my guess as well, specifically because of the Twilight Renaissance. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real thing. You're both right. You're yes. both right. The Twilight Renaissance is excellent. I will say I'm not sure why Gen Z hasn't canceled it's Twilight. It's because it's I ironically, read Twilight. I loved it. Like yes. it's irony, yes. right? Yeah. It's irony. It's so bad. I mean, rewatch the first movie. The writing is oh, yeah, atrocious. Yeah. And I, I'm really it's, glad it's that other watch. people are like living the experience that I've lived for years catching reruns right. of the first movie on TV <laughs> and thinking about how some of these lines I was convinced I just made up. And no, it's actually real people, not bad. Yeah. 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 Repeat. Real people don't talk like um, the way that they talk in Twilight. But yeah, apparently Gen Z has decided that we're not canceling Twilight. Give it a few years and then we'll all, you know, realize that Bella is a horrible example to set um, for women everywhere. Oh, that's been but... discussed. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yes. yeah. And Edward's obsession. Yeah. Gen Z slang words. Andrew, you're going to really like this one. I have a feeling. <laughs> um, the suffix. Ussie. <laughs> okay. This one, I kind of have an idea. Okay. of what it means so mm -hmm. like you're you're really into it you're obsessed with it you kind of want to when i think of ussy i think of like thrusting into it <laughs> like you want to <laughs> fuck it <laughs> oh my wow. gosh that was that was visual <laughs> um i would say that it is more of like you add it it's a word that you add on to something so the example that i put is he put his whole Phil Ussy into the Tarzan soundtrack, meaning Phil Collins. And it means that he put his whole, you know, he put his all into that. Okay, yeah. If you put your Ussy into something, it means like my Clo Ussy did really great on that podcast recording. <laughs> you put everything into it, you. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh. 
<laughs> I wish everyone could see that. Andrew is literally thrusting <laughs> right now. Knocking Patrons, over my I hope desk. you're enjoying that. But <laughs> yes, that is correct. What about himbo? I have no clue what this means. Pam, do you? I do know what himbo means. <laughs> yes, Pam. What himbo is himbo? Is a, is a male bimbo. Um, so it's a guy that's like super attractive. There's some discrepancy over how buff a himbo needs to be, but. More muscles, the better, usually. <laughs> Not a lot going on up here, but he's got the spirit and he respects women. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. He respects women. Yes. He's hot and he's kind of dumb. It's the male version of a bimbo. Himbo. Andrew's a himbo. Just kidding. Woo! Just kidding. Just kidding. Oh, you're very attractive no, and respectful of women, but you're too smart to be a himbo, I think, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. The last one, this one is pretty obscure, and I threw this in as like a, ooh, let's see if you can get it. Poor little meow meow. (laughs) And your example here is Kylo Ren from Star Wars. So I'm thinking like, just kind of a, he's sad, a little uh, skinny, sad skinny boy. (laughs) Kylo Ren is not skinny. Adam Driver Uh, is a tank. Okay. Um. (laughs) But True. valid, you're not too far off. It's really like the anti-hero. You know, it's the bad guy that you can't help but love. For example, okay. Kylo Ren. Um, email boy is probably also a good description. I th- I feel like you were nearing there, Andrew. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is a K- K-pop origin um, word. And I will say with Gen Z, K-pop has made a huge impact on our generation. Um a lot of their words, their phrases, their even hand movements have made it into mainstream Gen Z culture. So that was my little Gen Z um, 101. Thank you. Updated a couple months later for everyone. I look forward to our next update with Chloe. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. So to wrap this I'll up. I'll age out of this, though. Yeah. I won't be cool anymore <laughs> once <laughs> for a little bit. So I want to turn the tables now. And I thought we could do a little uh, quiz asking you if you know certain yes. millennial things. Okay. We'll see here. So Pam and I both have questions for you. Okay. How many top friends were you allowed to set on MySpace? So it was my space top eight. Yes. Oh, yes. That's Correct. One hundred percent. Okay. We should preface this. I'm a zillennial. Some I know. people consider me like I'm cusp, right? So I, I got some millennial tendencies. So we, I, I purposefully tried to, you know, do some harder ones because I know that you mentioned that last time we had you on to talk about Gen yeah. Z. You would both be in my MySpace top eight. Oh, wow. Is that, cute? is that cute to say? Yeah, yes. that's cute. cute. That is cute. <laughs> I think I had a t-shirt that said like MySpace top eight or something like that. <laughs> you know what? If you brought that back, that would be really cool. Yeah, very retro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gen Z would be like, that's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what's what's your next question? Okay, um, this one might be a little bit harder unless you were also a Pokemon fan. Obviously, that was a big thing for millennials. So in the original Pokemon Red and Blue Game Boy games, which of these was not a Pokemon you could start your quest out with? Is it A, Pikachu, Ooh. B, Bulbasaur, C, Charmander, or D, Squirtle? Ooh. Okay, I did trade Pokemon cards at camp. Mm. Okay, I want to go with Bulbazar B, um, just because I feel like the other three are the ones I think of when I think of Pokemon. Like, they're like the main three I would think of. And like, you can't get rid of those because those are the cutest in my op- uh, in my opinion. So I'm going to go B, Bulbazar. <laughs> It's actually, honestly, that's a good guess. It's actually a Pikachu, and what? I know, and it doesn't make any sense that's because crazy. on the show, Ash starts out with Pikachu. So, yeah, that, like when this game came out, I remember specifically my brother and I, you know, got a copy. We were playing it, and he was like, "Well, you can't get Pikachu. That's so dumb." And he was like distraught that you had to go and catch one. <laughs> Damn, Shane in the Discord just said fail. <laughs> Shoot, they they did change it. They did change yeah. that. So, you know, now you can. Well, in some games, you can, I believe. Okay, good. We got her. How about this? <laughs> what was the original color of the Live Strong wristbands? These were very popular when we were growing up. 
Yellow. Yes. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah, they were yellow. That was a Lance Armstrong thing. Helping fight cancer. Okay. and <laughs> Yes, I remember. <laughs> last question. What did Sam Goody sell? Yeah, no idea. This one, <laughs> yes. I don't even know who Sam Goody is. So. <laughs> That's is that a person? <laughs> it was a store in the mall. In the mall. And they sell like okay. movies and CDs, which are coming back. Oh. We're going to have to talk about that at some point. Yeah, CD oh sales God. have been so excited. up. <laughs> oh, good, good. So, all right. So you you got two of them, right? That's good. Are, yeah. Right? Again, yeah. Cusper. But yeah. I mean, I remember Blockbuster, but that's kind of it when it comes to like movie renting. That was, yeah, exactly. Sam Goody, mm-hmm. you bought DVDs and you you kept them. Oh, do you know what's so funny about this question? <laughs> I we never I never had a Sam Goody near me growing up. It was like this was like okay. non-existent where I lived. So did they sell VH, VHS too? I I guess I don't I mean, know. Probably at question. some point. Where would you go? We got all our VHS tapes from Costco, honestly, because you know Mama G loved a bargain. Mm, true. So. <laughs> I will say I'm home right now and I noticed yesterday that I have like an entire VHS collection of the Barbie movies. Um, <laughs> Love that. So, All right. Well, that was fun. We have two more topics to get to today. But first, this week's episode is sponsored by one of our favorite sponsors, Felix Gray. And they actually turned six years old this month. So they are currently having a birthday sale. Felix Gray offer the blue light glasses that started it all. They set out to create eyewear that would improve daily screen time. And ever since, Felix Gray has been on a mission to create a better relationship with technology. Their lenses filter 15 times more blue light that can make screen time tough on eyes and disruptive to sleep. So don't waste your time with those crappy blue light glasses that you find elsewhere. Go for the gold. Their site also has some interesting info on what makes their glasses better and why blue light is harmful. It's pretty interesting to read. I am obsessed with wearing these glasses. They really do work. I'm wearing them for much of my workday every day. They greatly reduce the eye strain that I get from staring at a screen all day. And, um, I'll, you know, my eyes will start feeling strained. And I'm like, what's wrong right now? I'm missing my glasses. Put them on. It really helps. Right now, Felix Gray is celebrating their sixth birthday, like I said. From April 19th until the 24th, you can get 15% off everything with code BIRTHDAY15. Use promo code BIRTHDAY15 at checkout for 15% off everything. Non-prescription and prescription glasses are available. Check them out now. FelixGrayGlasses.com slash M-I-L-L. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y Glasses.com slash M-I-L-L. Free shipping, free returns, free exchanges. FelixGrayGlasses.com slash M-I-L-L. All right, turning to our next topic today. This was kind of inspired by pain that is inflicted upon me every day. And I know everybody else is having this issue, too. (laughs) (laughs) Spam calls and text messages have been on the rise. You two must get these daily, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And spam texts have gotten worse. Like, I was getting those maybe once a month, maybe once a week. Now I'm getting spam texts every damn day. Same. I saw this report earlier today. The average person received 42 spam texts in the month of March, according to the call text blocking app RoboKiller. So, yeah, it's become a big problem. And actually, this issue was in the headlines recently when many Verizon customers received text messages from their own phone number. Yeah. Verizon was like, oh, we've identified the issue. It was from spammers who figured out some sort of loophole. But that just shows you how out of control it's gotten. And Pam, I know when we were planning this discussion, you received some some selfies from bots. What? Yeah, yeah. It's like if they look like, you know, normal selfies. It's just some maybe like 20 something blonde girl. And it just kind of seemed like the message was it made it kind of sound like, you know, it was a wrong number and she was texting somebody from like a dating app 20 or something, something that had, blonde yeah. girl the horror but yeah so um i i took a screenshot and i sent it to my friend andrea because she had i remembered that she had told me she had gotten uh something similar and she ended up texting back because the person asked like where 
she was like, where are you? Like, I'm waiting here. And she was like, I don't know if this is like spam or if this is somebody that's actually waiting for a date. And she went back and forth and she ended up like texting the person back saying wrong number. And they said, OK, thank you. <laughs> and so I sent her a screenshot of these text messages that I had got. And I said, not sure if spam or, or actually wrong number. She goes, it's spam. I got that same picture with different texts. And a friend of mine also got that same picture with different texts. Oh so. Poor girl. Who is this big this girl's picture they're using? I have no idea, but you're right. Like it's clearly a picture that some that some spammers took from probably just the internet. Like clearly just looks like a normal selfie. How sad. It's not me, right? No, it's not you. (laughs) I would be honored if it were me. Um, so this actually happened to me too. A young blonde girl, probably in her twenties, nose piercing. So this girl, and by the way, the area code that it's allegedly coming from is my phone number's area code. So I just get a photo of this girl, close up, attractive girl. I like fucking with the bots. So I replied, hottie. She replies, oh shit, I must have gave this to the wrong man. <laughs> Anywho, I crave someone to show me a seductive time tonight. What are you up to today? I said... Unfortunately, I suck fat cock. I'm not into women. <laughs> if you know any hot guys with giant cocks, oh. please let me know. This is just for my own personal amusement, you know? Oh she sends back God. a full frontal nude. <laughs> full frontal. No. Put her up. Oh, my no. goodness. Are you kidding? Yeah, it's because you <laughs> fucked with her. <laughs> oh, my I won't post that. God. I'll post just I the face in our believe. Discord so people can... <laughs> I crave a seductive time. That really is not sexy at all. If anyone said, I crave a seductive time to me, I'd block them. I'd Andrew, say, this is the goodbye. Same girl's really? <laughs> we both got the same girl coming after us. Damn. Yes. Wait, you got a full frontal nude. No, no, no because I didn't reply back. I guess if I would have, I might have. But I got this same picture. Because it, oh, like you see, girl. like it looks like a normal person. It doesn't look like, you know... Yeah, it doesn't look it like doesn't a look spammer. Like it would be a fake. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The unfortunately I suck cock <laughs> really gets me. Um I just crack myself up messing with them. But yeah, so um as we see, it has gotten quite bad. I also had a weird experience yesterday with a spam call. I've also started, um, and I picked this up from Pat, I started messing with the spam callers. So for a year or two now, when a spammer calls Pat, Pat will actually answer and he'll say, Sapphire Strip Club, how can we make your lap happy? And just really throws off the person on the other end. (laughs) Oh my God. So I've started doing this too. That's everything. (laughs) I'd keep I'd stay on the phone with that person. I'd be like, can you tell me more about the services you offer? <laughs> but then so yesterday I, I answered and I didn't say that, but I just to fuck with them again. I just started screaming into the phone. I just went ah! and then hung up like mid scream. <laughs> but they called back immediately. And I know it's a bot system doing it. <laughs> And I kept doing these different things to fuck with them. A second after I hung up, I would get a call from another number. Again, same area code as my own immediately. So finally, after like the eighth different number in the span of like 90 seconds. You did this eight times? They kept calling back. Oh, my God. So this time, the last time I said, hello. And then they they started identifying themselves. And I said, please stop calling me. And then I hung up. And after that, it stopped. So you can't even fuck with them for fun. they Because they'll call back immediately. <laughs> you have to say, don't call me. Hey, Andrew, I'm calling about your car's extended warranty. Yep. yep. Um, do you mind calling me back? That is the only one that I get. I don't oh, get so any lucky. real people. I only get that my car is extended warranty <laughs> and it follows me. Yeah, that's become it. a big meme online because everybody seems to be getting those damn warranty calls, alleged warranty calls. But anyway, it's out of control. What can we do about it? Well, there is the National Do Not Call Registry, which is a load of crap. You can add your number. <laughs> you still get calls, though. It makes no difference. As do you get as- less? No difference. No difference. I don't I don't think I see any difference. Damn. You can report calls and texts to the FTC, but who's going to do that? 
when you're getting so many of these calls and texts. I just learned this today. AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile customers can forward spam texts to 7726. And then they also ask you for the number that the spam call came from or the text came from. Then I guess they'll investigate it. I was thinking like, maybe I should just get a new phone number and give that phone number out to very, very few people. And see if that makes a difference. Oh, exclusivity, like a celebrity, huh? Yeah. Like- that could work because I think the way that people get spam texts is through us submitting our number online, not yes. actually people getting, you know, your friends having your phone number. No, of course. Yeah. And they want real people. So they're just looking out for those real numbers to, to spam and text. But you're absolutely right. Something else I realized this morning, I was looking at a New York Times article about this issue. When you put in your phone number at, say, a restaurant or a coffee shop for their frequent flyer programs for your quote unquote membership, you may trust the coffee shop or the restaurant, but you don't know what app they're using to store your Mm -hmm. number. And that company might be selling the phone numbers that they collect to data brokers, which actually John Oliver did a piece on a few weeks ago and how all our data gets distributed multiple times. And that's why we get so many spam emails, calls, and texts. So that's another reason why I'm thinking maybe get a new number. Don't give my actual number out to restaurants and stuff. What you can do is actually get a free phone number through Google Voice. And then you can just use that phone number anytime you're at a coffee shop or wherever else. So I'm thinking of testing this. Maybe Maybe uh, maybe I should test it just for the show to see if this actually makes a difference. Do it for the show, baby. <laughs> I don't even want people calling me anyway. I hate talking on the phone. <laughs> Do Gen Zers love or yes. hate? Yes. Hate it. Andrew hates talking on the phone. He hates voice memos. Don't send them to him. Oh, we've spoken about this on Millennial. Yes, because I love sending voice memos. I think it's cute. And I had a, you know... Andrew and I were complaining about something that happened. Um, I get it. Sometimes it's easier. I wanted to rant. Yeah, Yeah, I wanted to rant. I wanted to send a voice memo. Instead, I had to type it out because (laughs) I know Andrew doesn't like voice memos. But here's here's the thing about voice memos. First, you have to stop what you're doing to listen to it. And this is why I don't like watching videos online. I don't like voice memos because you have to stop what you're doing, stop what you're listening to. I have to stop editing to listen to somebody rant. I'm somebody. Not a, I'm Is not somebody. I, here? Well, I'm Bye. just speaking generally. <laughs> I also typed out a long message to Pam. <laughs> She um, did. She did. Because but I did. Pam to said be she fair, didn't like voice memos either. See? To be fair, I said that I would make an exception for you, and <laughs> you chose. But I didn't. But I didn't want to be the asshole listen, that sent you a voice memo when you don't no, 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 like no, no, no. them. L- listen, it's because there are people that abuse the voice memo ah. system, and so it gets old really fast. And also, like Andrew, you know, I ha- I've had in the past some people they send a voice m- memo and then they just assume that I'm able to listen to it right away because I work from home, mm. and so they treat it like a text. It's like. If you want a response right away, like text me because at least I'll see that pop up. I'm yeah. not going to have time to stop like what Andrew's saying. Valid. Stop everything I'm right. doing to or like what? listen to your voice memo. Sorry. Or what if like you're at a party or you're watching a TV show right, with somebody right. like you got to pause what you're doing to, yeah. to listen. But if you don't like I get it, I get the your technology points. and like you're OK with me, like not listening to your voice memo until maybe the end of the day sometimes. And that's fine. Well, instead, you got an essay long text from me with paragraphs. <laughs> you did. You did. It, was it was great. Long. I appreciate it. Was- <laughs> yeah, it was very long. It was so long that I typed it in a Google Doc. In case you guys were wondering. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Well, sorry, <laughs> Chloe. From beyond. you, I I will grant you an exception here on the show today, I right did. now. Voice memo the shit out of me. I'll listen to. But here's <laughs> a, here's my thing about the voice memos. If you do send them, I can't promise I'm going to listen straight away. That's all I need people to know. I'll listen to it when I can. That I is, think that's is that fair? So yeah, kind and fair. I feel <laughs> so special that you both have given me exceptions, and I'm happy now. <laughs> okay. Great. So mm-hmm. anyway, <laughs> there is another feature that iPhone and Android both have. You can actually mute unknown callers. And this can be nice. This is just a quick way to um, 
mute anybody who you don't have in your contact list. In iPhone, you go to settings, then phone, then there's a silence unknown callers setting you can turn on. And this will silence calls from unknown numbers and send them directly to voicemail and display them on your recent list. So it's not like those numbers won't be listed at all on your phone. You'll still get a record in case it is somebody who uh, you genuinely know who needed to get in touch with you. Android has a similar feature. Like I said, you go into the phone app, you go to settings, you tap block block numbers, and then toggle on the block unknown caller setting. I tried having this on. The problem is, let's say you're going to have a plumber come over or you're getting a verification call from your bank or the bank's trying to call you. Those number, those calls are going to go directly to voicemail. And that's what happened to me a couple times where it unintentionally sent a call to voicemail that I wouldn't normally want to be sent to voicemail. So I ended up turning this feature off because I just didn't want to risk it anymore. I have also tried I I have Verizon. They have a call filtering app you can download and they'll, they'll filter calls out for you. But the call still comes in and not only do you get the notification about the call, but you get another notification from Verizon saying this is a spam call. So you're just getting two <laughs> notifications for each spam call. I'm like this this doesn't well, help. And it's not even working. I mean, at least it like what if you didn't know it was a spam call? I just assume every phone number I don't have is a spam call. Really? Yes. Unless I it's a Vegas same, area honestly. code. The good thing about living here in Vegas is it's not the area code that I have on my actual phone number. So anytime I see my area code oh. from New Jersey, I just assume it's a spam call. Nobody's calling That's me in New Jersey smart. unless I already have their number. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I usually get calls now from DC rather than San Diego. That's smart. So I guess You're that's so smart, Andrew. Well, I didn't intend to. I didn't move out here to to thwart true. spam callers. <laughs> Clever though, you thought of it. <laughs> yeah. So maybe that's a good way to thwart people or figure <laughs> out if it's a spam call or not. So and then Verizon, you can pay for like a, a, a premium call filtering app. I'm like, Verizon, this is your job to filter out That's the calls so and crack down that on they spam. They want to squeeze more money out yeah, of you. Yeah, you already exactly. spend so much yeah. money. Those are my tips. Like I said, you can try joining the National Do Not Call Registry. You can set up a Google Voice number and use that number for frequent flyer programs, etc. Or you can turn on these settings built into iPhone and Android. There are some options, but really, I think the carriers need to take care of this. The phone makers need to take care of this. And the government needs to step in and do something, increase the fines, start going after people more, something, because it's getting worse and worse. I think that the people that fall prey to spam calls are folks that this wasn't the norm. So I think they tend, yeah, the older generations. And even my mom, sometimes she's like, is this like because the package ones, especially that were really popular a while ago, mm-hmm. like she she was like really falling for those. And I'm like, do not press that link They're Like that is not real. But as someone who orders something like, oh, they have my phone number, they could text me like yeah. that's the sad part. Like people can lose money. People can get oh, yeah. their and, identity and stolen from this. Yeah. I mean, my mom works at a bank and. I I can't eat the number of times she has told us stories about, you know, especially older people falling victim to scams and wiring money or being on the cusp of wiring money is insane and it's only getting worse. And I cannot uh, publicly talk about some of these things, mm-hmm. unfortunately, but just like just know that some of these are crazy and it's it is really sad because you know they're older people that are yeah you know, they don't know yeah it is really sad so be careful we will talk about face filters and using them on social media in a moment but first our second sponsor this week is scribd who give you instant access to a world of information Wired, TechCrunch, and Forbes have called it the Netflix for books, and you can get access for two months for just 99 cents. With Scribd, you've got more than a great reading subscription. You've got a resource for learning new skills. Maybe you want to learn how to meditate, level up your cooking game, or launch your career to new heights. Whatever your goals are, Scribd's library can help you achieve them. 
What I love about Scribd is having instant access to a huge, huge amount of amazing content from best-selling books and audiobooks to magazines like Time, People, and Entertainment Weekly to newspapers like The Independent and The Los Angeles Times. It's a one-stop shop for reading, information, and learning. I love popping in when I'm looking for something new to read because everything that's there, you have access to. There's nothing else to pay for. It's just one flat monthly rate. Right now, Scribd is offering our listeners two months of Scribd for only 99 cents. Go to try.scribd.com slash millennial to get your first two months for less than $1. That's try.scribd.com slash millennial. A link is also in the show notes. I wanted to talk about face filters and also just uh, touching up photos in general. Um, This is something that I've been thinking about for a while as a user of TikTok, where it feels like almost every other video I watch, someone's using some kind of filter on their face. And then I saw this feature over on BuzzFeed News that was talking about cosmetic surgery filters. And this report specifically points out that lately there's been a push from both Gen Z and millennials to cut cut back on any filters that, you know, alter your face to the point where it looks like you got uh, quite a bit of work done. So obviously filters aren't anything new. You know, Snapchat probably is credited to uh, for popularizing the use of filters, which they call lenses. Um, So that was back in 2015, but it's never been more accessible to filter your face and quite easily as well on other platforms like TikTok, for example, and also Instagram as well. Uh, Even Zoom has beauty filters. You can ask them to touch up your appearance. And, you know, a lot of us have been using Zoom a lot over the course of the pandemic as well. So with all of that in mind, I wanted to know just to kick things off, how we personally feel about the use of filters and also just uh, appearance altering apps like Facetune as well. Yeah, I was glad you wanted to talk about this because it's a thought that I've had too, because I feel like people have become more reliant on face filters and it can be unhealthy from a mental health perspective. But also I'm just thinking about like you create these unrealistic expectations about yourself. And then what happens when you go in public? <laughs> you can't manipulate your face and your body and your teeth. They're nice features. They're easy feature features. They can be helpful. I've used the face filter on Zoom to to touch up my face without having to put Haven't stuff. Haven't we all? Yeah, to cover up blemishes <laughs> and stuff. It's great. I've used some of the Snapchat ones as well, but I really do think that they are dangerous. They are. And I think that there's this huge shift that's happened since these filters have come out that people used to look better in real life than they did online because certain people aren't photogenic or they didn't take um, a good photo. So when you saw someone in person, it was like, oh, wow, like you're beautiful. It's the opposite now because you can doctor photos yourself. You can use Facetune, Photoshop, these filters. So when you meet someone in real life, you're like, hmm, you look better online. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's this huge change. Um, you know, I deal with filters a lot and editing photos a lot just because of my job. And listen, I use filters. Um, I think that the the good thing about filters on these apps is that you they tell you if you're using them, unless you like save the picture and re-upload it, whatever. But um, most of the time, if you're just using a filter directly in the app, they'll tell you that it's filtered. And there, I don't think there's really like any harm in the filters that like blur your blemishes. Like, okay, there's no, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, But for me, it's, a huge deal because of the layers that come underneath it. Like, okay, you use a filter. Why are you using that filter? And it comes down to societal norms and pressure regarding beauty standards. Um, It comes down to, you know, Eurocentric features seemingly being the best or the wanted features. Um, And also it comes down to, honesty and transparency as well. So there's so many layers here to just, you know, picking a fun face filter that you think you look good in. Okay, but what is the story behind that? And why do we need to use them or have them in the first place? 
I'm glad you brought up the Eurocentric features point because a lot of the filters are catered for better or worse to um, Eurocentric features. Uh, even like something as rudimentary as, you know, Instagram filters for your photos that pretty much just alter lighting. Um, I'm, I'm fairly light skinned for somebody that is Mexican American, for example, but even I, it's a little bit better now. I think they've gotten a little bit better in terms of the lighting filters on Instagram, but back when Instagram kind of first started in the first, maybe like five, seven years of the app, I, because I just, I have a lot of white friends, a lot of times they would put filters on that would make them look tan, but then I would look extremely dark yeah so it doesn't always work you mm -hmm. know and then like but it's like and I know that it, it could happen the other way around like I could use a, a filter that was more catering to like my skin tone and then it would wash them out um and but I always thought it was kind of funny that most people that were paler than me were always like oh, I look so washed out I wish you had like darkened the photo a bit you put a tan it was like but then I'm not like yeah, realistically portraying my skin tone. And it's so hard to like make people see that or make people see that, you know, even like like the ring light, for example, that I'm yeah. using for this show makes me probably look more a little bit more pale than I am, even though I am, like I said, more light skinned. So mm -hmm. uh, that's an issue as well, for sure. No, that's and it goes so the other true. way, too, with like darkening skin tones for mm -hmm. for people that are lighter as well. So yeah, I mean, I'm in an interracial relationship and he's really dark skin and there's no filters that I could use that would work for both of us. So I don't. Um, but for the first part of our relationship, you know, as someone who does social media, I did use filters before I used Lightroom and I edited my photos in a very particular way every time. And that doesn't work. Um, so it's definitely and I think that um, more than anything, it's just this one note filter all of the filters that cosmetically yeah. alter you they make your lips bigger and they make your nose smaller period <laughs> yeah and i mean the facetune app which i've used and i'll admit i have used it to whiten my teeth a couple of times uh especially yeah. when the 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 um the lighting maybe made my teeth look not as good as i think they do um that facetune app lets you manipulate the shape of your face uh, mm -hmm. your skin tone, your teeth. They have a lot of very granular settings and it's worrying that people might become very reliant on manipulating, not just the face, like we're establishing here, like covering up blemishes, that's fine. And look, mm -hmm. even if you want to put a little bit of a filter over your whole face, I'm not like too bothered by that or too worried about that. But like, if you're manipulating your body, that's when I get worried. Yeah. I mean, I used a filter yesterday uh, and posted on Instagram that made me look tanner. I got no problem with that. But it tells you, right? <laughs> your There's birthday. We'll let it. We'll let it. We'll let it. <laughs> Listen, I looked hot, Andrew. I wanted to post a selfie. Um, I think that the issue with Facetune is the lack of transparency, right? When you're on Snapchat and when you're on Instagram and you're using a filter, it tells you. Mm -hmm. But when you're using Facetune and someone posts something, you have no idea. I use yeah. Facetune actually for my other job. I never edit anyone on Millennial or MuggleCast because they're perfect. They don't need any editing. Um, but every once in a while, I use it for my other job. Um, and the thing about Facetune 2 specifically, which is the latest and most updated one, is it looks so real. To oh, the point really? where it's almost unclockable. Mm -hmm. And they do it for you. So you can press a button and it'll change what you want it to. Facetune 1, you had to actually do it yourself. Um, and it's scary. And there's some things you can do that are harmless, right? Changing the lighting, lightening your teeth, getting out blemishes, whatever. But the issue is celebrities and influencers using Facetune and those who have more money like celebrities using Photoshop and having you think that that's just the way that they look when in reality it couldn't be further from what they actually look like and that is the harm right because you and I we all we know that 
people are using Facetune. What about the 11, 12 year olds that are on Instagram for the mm. first time and they're looking at models and they're looking at celebrities and they're thinking, why don't I look like that? Why do I have the hair there and they don't? Why do I look a certain way? I want to look that way. And the Kardashians, I think, are the worst. And we can go into that later a little bit. But um, this this perfect image that's so curated and crafted is damaging it it's creating mental health problems it's creating unrealistic expectations of what people look like my issue is like if you're editing your photos you better be telling people yeah don't present it as the truth you bring up a good point about snapchat and instagram you know notifying people when a filter is being used i can't see myself though like let's say i whiten my teeth in a photo i'm not going to put at the bottom of it like i whiten my teeth in this photo by the way that's harmless though <laughs> yeah true if you're making your butt bigger or you know <laughs> yeah. making your bicep bigger or you know those sort of things like that is not cool yeah that isn't cool yeah and, and uh, it's let's... your insecurities and i get not yours andrew i'm just saying in general <laughs> yeah like that's insecurities sure but the issue is that it's like just piling on insecurities for other people as well. And we also have to note that I mean this is an issue that's been around for a really long time. Think of magazine magazine covers, people being touched up and manipulated so they look more attractive on the cover. Yep. And then kids look at those in the grocery store aisles. Why don't I look like this? Yep. It's just gotten worse. Chloe, you've you've talked a little bit about throughout the dis- this discussion about your job and stuff and I know that you've also mentioned to us before that you have a lot of friends that are in social media professionally. So I wanted to know like is there like an ethical protocol involved in terms of what you do when it comes to digitally altering images? Or is that just something that's not um, ever addressed? And the only reason I ask this is because with traditional journalism, um, like they talked about this a lot when I was in school, mm-hmm. uh, specifically with news. So not like fashion magazines, that's like completely different. But like in terms of news, there's really only so much that you can do to alter a photo, because if you go too far, then it's uh, misrepresentation. Mm-hmm. And it's like essentially like you're lying, basically. So yeah. um, how does it work in the social media world? So there's really no protocol for influencers, um, especially since it's so new and like the industry grew so much so rapidly. Um, There isn't really protocol when it comes to what you can and can't do in terms of transparency with editing. Like your favorite influencer, let me just say this now, on air is editing her photos or his photos or their photos, period. I don't care where, who it is, they're editing their photos. They could be doing it in a min- like minimalistic way, but they are because they're perfectly crafting this image that they want and influencers and those that I'm friends with facetune their photos almost immediately in my experience they pick their favorite one and they go straight to facetune or if they're more advanced photoshop they're at least putting a filter on it unless they're one of those authentic influencers with and their whole brand is that they don't edit but they're still editing their photos a little maybe maybe it's changing the brightness whatever it is like there's very few photos out there now that it's like oh i just uploaded that to instagram without touching it without you know whatever um i think for me because i'm often posting like i'm not an influencer myself I have like a solid amount of followers, but I do social media for other people, right? And when I'm posting pictures of other people, that's where there is ethics, right? I cannot edit someone else unless they tell me to. So, and then the other, the awkwardness in that is that what if there's multiple people in a photo and someone asks me to edit them, but not other people? So they, you know, are blemish free and have white teeth, whatever it is they ask me to do, but the other people aren't. And it's like, well, then do I go back and do I edit those other people to match that one person or do I go back and ask those people? And it's super, it's a gray area because there's no really like, this is the way that you do it. This is what you have to do. 
Um, and most people don't tell you when something's edited. They're not transparent about it because who wants to be like, oh, yeah, I edited this photo, kind of like what Andrew said earlier. Who wants to be like, oh, I didn't like the way that I looked in this picture. I didn't think I looked perfect. So I edited this and this and this. Um, so there's not really a protocol. I think people just decide. So I have my own stand standard of ethics <laughs> when it comes to editing uh, people's pictures. Um, and I think that's pretty common unless a company has like a company wide protocol. That's yeah, that's so interesting. Um, and I never really thought about group photos in terms mm -hmm. of social media posting. I guess it's marginally better than what it was like before with magazines where they didn't even ask you if you wanted to get touched up. They just did yeah, it. I will never touch someone up unless they ask. I that is not the business that I'm in, though, specifically. Like it's different when you're in the beauty industry or maybe the fashion industry. Like I'm posting um, for a nonprofit. I don't need to edit these pictures to make people look a <laughs> specific way. Um, but that's not the case with influencers or brands. Do we ever look back on photos that we um, touched up and and think <sighs> now in hindsight that we went back, like we went a little too far with it? Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. There's times where I'm like, you know, because sometimes you do this when maybe um, it's at night. So your phone brightness isn't as high up when you're just watching <laughs> in bed, looking at it in bed. And then you look the next day and you're like, what was I thinking with that? There's a wonky line somewhere. <laughs> well, yeah, or it just it just looks overly processed. That's my problem. I have a couple photos on Instagram where I'm like, I look back on that and I think it just looks kind of it looks like I used the Facetune app though it's funny yeah. there's one photo from a couple years ago i won't say which one because i don't want everybody going and looking for it but i think it is so obvious the face tuning i did on that specifically i cleaned up my appearance and whiten whiten my teeth i look at this photo and i'm like oh my god this is so fake i should delete you this you know that everyone's gonna go look but right? but like <laughs> but here's the funny thing to me Pat and I were recently talking about this specific photo, not in the context of, I think I look fake as fuck. He was like, oh, that's a really good photo of you. I'm like, yeah, it's because I facetuned the shit out of my face. <laughs> but he's like, but he's like, no, no, it's not because of that. You just look good otherwise. I'm like, I really do not think so. And that's why I facetuned <laughs> it. But I had to post this photo for a certain reason. I will also admit that there are some photos if you go a little bit further back in my Instagram I don't think they're clockable but they're edited um but again this is my job right which gives me power in the way that I can edit something and make it look like it was just taken that way yeah. um which I use for good not evil um but this is one reason why I love this new sponsor that we have, Apostrophe, who is not sponsoring this week's episode, but they really are helping my skin. And I just don't want to look fake on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Your face looks beautiful without any face tuning, Andrew. Well, and like I think both of you said when we started this discussion, I my honestly, my biggest fear is somebody thinking I look better online than I look in person Me or thinking too. that I don't look anything like I look on camera or like you know yeah. if they see me in person or meet me in person and that's that's like not just with people like i've never met it's also with just people that i know me so too. i feel that and i will say like i was i've mentioned this before but i was in a sorority and i was in a sorority during the time where this one filter was going around all of our sororities and we were all using this one filter for our photos it was like a preset filter and I look back on those photos and I'm like, holy shit, this is so edited. And we didn't edit like our our facial structure or our bodies or anything. But it was like we looked, you know, like orange and our hair was made blonder. It's if you scroll back far enough in my Instagram, you'll see that era. But the whole point was that we wanted our photos to look exactly the same. Um, and it's just so overdone. And I actually don't post photos with that much filtering now. Good. Thank you. <laughs> well done. It just looks fake. It looks yeah, fake, right? We, it does. We, we all know now. And it's funny because like, um, there was this common refrain in the early days of Instagram. Early days of Instagram, we would all put filters over our photos, whether it's us mm -hmm. or a tree. Valencia. Or, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> or, you know, uh, food. We'd put Those filters and borders on everything. I know. But the thing is, if you go back and look at these photos 20 years from now, you're going to be thinking like, why the fuck did I crop this into a square? <laughs> and there's a filter on yeah. it. You can barely ah. see it. But we used to think that was so cool, putting a filter on things. I still yeah. use some of the filters, but... Instagram yeah. these days, thank goodness, is all about like the real photo. You, at least I think. You know what, y'all? I've had an Instagram since I was twelve because that's oh, when Lord. Instagram came out. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm sorry. Um, I try to talk about my age very little. It's okay. It keeps <laughs> but, us no, humble. No, it's not. It's not that. It's just like I don't know. I just I don't know if it's healthy for kids that young. No, too. no, it's you know, not. Like, that's that's what that I'm was saying. my oh lord. It wasn't like oh my god, Chloe's so young. Like which obviously <laughs> you are. It was just like oh my god. Like it's kind of sad that right. You know, and and I also have like um like little cousins and stuff that are mm-hmm. on Instagram and and they have been for you know since they were 12 13 or whatever and I just think like no this is not the place for you baby no. like this is not good the government's not looking into this too cuz there should be age limits it's yeah there should be 100% but like I cleared out everything before my senior year of high school so you will not get any cringe <laughs> you know yeah that's you a good idea really. did you archive and, like, them or did did you delete them? Well, so archive wasn't a thing until oh, okay. kind of recently ish. So the those are deleted. They're gone, baby. <laughs> so, you can't find them. So with archiving something, you can remove it from your grid, but you can still mm-hmm. access it, which is good. I think that way you yes. don't have to delete the photos. Yes, I definitely have some cringy photos in my archive, but they're <laughs> like from my college experience. I didn't have an awkward fade an awkward phase until college so um fun fact for everyone so i've archived a few photos from college (laughs) yeah i feel like i feel like we kind of touched on everything that i had okay um just like out of order so i don't know how to gracefully (laughs) move on but we can move on okay well yeah just go ahead i would just say that like if you are an influencer or know an influencer if they're editing their photos ask them to be on honest to their audience they don't have to maybe go into full detail but they should at least be admitting admitting their editing their photos if Pam and I spoke about this while we were planning this episode but James Charles who is not a good person don't get me wrong um he has always been really transparent about how he edits his photos and I always appreciated it he just was honest about it and was like yeah, I edited that photo to shit. But, you know, at least I'm telling you. And it's true. Yeah. Like, if you're editing those photos, and some people really love editing their photos, okay, just tell people that it's not real. Yeah. And maybe there will be a um, growing movement around this idea because I know Instagram has tried to add some features to better manage one's mental health. And I could see them down the road adding maybe a little like tag that you can append to your post admitting mm-hmm. that this photo yeah. was filtered. You wouldn't have to turn it on, but the option was there. And then maybe that could start a trend. I love that idea. That's Thank brilliant. You. Okay. Because they already have sponsored posts. So, like, right. That is something that's on Instagram. So right. Partnership do with. It. Yeah. Yeah. This photo is filtered, edited, yeah, whatever. manipulated something. Yeah. I think that'd be a, a good middle ground for everybody. All right. Well, that about does it for this week's episode, though. Coming up in After Dark, since our social media manager, Chloe, is here, we're going to have another social media inspired discussion. Pam, do you want to share what we're going to talk about? Yeah, we're going to be talking about Twitter rules, but more like unspoken rules for how we choose who to mute, who to block, who to unfollow, (laughs) what to share, stuff like that. So we'll be chatting about basically how we use this stuff and uh i don't know maybe it'll get spicy it might turn <laughs> into uh, be some tea might, it will be yeah. spicy it might turn into <laughs> um uh, social media therapy again particularly for me because i continue to not understand what my identity should be on social media this discussion by the way is inspired by a hank green tweet where he was asking similar questions so we thought we could expand on that and share our own rules for how we follow and everything Pam said on Andrew, Twitter. 
if you ever want an in-depth conversation about your brand and identity on social media, you let me know, boo-boo. I got you. Well, that's what we're doing, boo-boo, in After Dark today. This is what... <laughs> Are we yeah, doing you that? Give, you I feel like we're not actually us. talking about But you know brand. what? If you want to, you could give Andrew and I both tips on how we could be <laughs> utilizing our platforms better because Lord knows I also don't use this stuff as much as I should. And we're I, both really in in careers that... Like we should probably be yeah, doing more. Here's what honestly, I'll say. you neither of you have reached your full social media potential. Oh, I that's what I'll I leave in our flop era. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's my problem. I'm in my flop era. <laughs> oh, shut and up! And that You're perfectly not. puts a cap on everything that we've discussed today. Uh, so that after dark discussion will be available at patreon.com slash millennial. When you pledge, you get access to our live streams. You get ad free millennial. You're supporting the show and it goes a long way to helping us uh, run this show. Uh, you get, depending on what level you pledge at, you get a new physical gift every year. You get access to our monthly Bay Hangouts. That's where we're hanging out with our top level supporters once a month on Zoom. It's always a lot of fun. All kinds of things, patreon.com slash millennial. And by the way, when you do pledge, you get access to a special RSS feed that you can pop into most podcast apps. And with that, you can easily listen to the bonus audio content that we release, Ad Free Millennial with After Dark, all wrapped up in what we call Mega Millennial in your favorite podcast app, except for Spotify, but all the others. So thanks everybody who supports us. By the way, we have an annual membership. So if you pledge for a year up front, you can get a little discount on your Patreon membership. By the way, my favorite podcaster, Leo, he recently introduced annual memberships. He doesn't give a discount. I'm like, dude, you got to entice people to sign up for a year. Give them a little discount. No discount for the annual send membership. Him a little, send him a little message. I don't want him to hate me, so I'm just, I'm just keeping from, quiet. Send it from Andrew on Patreon so he knows that you're serious. <laughs> and by the way, if you want some more tips... Check out my on- online course. <laughs> Maybe that's your in, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> one of the one of the members who I really like at at Twit, one of the staff members. He's my favorite behind Leo. He actually commented on my Instagram post congratulating me on the launch. Oh my god! Yep. Oh, look at you. Yay, you're you're one Andrew. step closer to your Lord and Savior, Leo Laporte. I, uh, oh my yeah. god! He's uh, yeah. I really like him as a podcaster. You've, co- you've come a long way from his life shooting you down. <laughs> I know. He follows me on Instagram and Twitter for some reason. Not Leo, this other guy. I don't know why he does, but I'm glad he does. So it's time for some recommendations. I want to recommend this business I heard about a few days ago, actually on another podcast that I work for. This company is called Flash Food. And this is an app for certain areas of the USA and Canada in which local food stores will post items that are nearing their best before date. And the items, their meats, breads, etc., they will be available for purchase at around half the price they're normally at. And they're still perfectly good to eat. So. You pay for the food through the app, then you pick it up in a box at the food store. This helps reduce food waste, which is a huge problem for the environment, and it helps get you a huge discount. So it's like I said, it's not available everywhere. They are trying to roll it out to more grocery stores across the country and Canada, but check it out. Maybe it's available in your area. It's called Flash Food. It's a free app. It, it's really wonderful. I love seeing things like this pop up to help uh, you know, reduce waste. I wanted to recommend fast track one time payments. I think if you live in the Bay Area or anywhere in California that has toll plazas of any kind, you might already have a fast track tag. So this wouldn't be applicable to you. But if you're coming to vacation in the Bay Area or anywhere that fast track handles tolls and stuff, it might be something to look into because you don't have to worry about looking out for the paper invoice that they'll send if you cross a bridge, for example, out here. Um, You can just go on to the Fast Track website and you can sign up for one-time payment and you can basically do this up to 30 days in advance of when you come out and you can set dates in terms of like when you might be crossing a bridge and when you will be out of the area again so that it just charges you directly and you don't have to worry about invoices or late fees or anything like that if you if you miss the payment date. My mom has one on her dashboard. Yeah, yeah. I think it's like I don't know if other states like out of California like if fast track is very um 
Well, they have equivalent like, used, like but... Chloe might know this one. Easy Pass. That's along yeah. the eastern uh, seaboard. Yeah. In the Midwest, they have I Pass in the Chicago area mm-hmm. and whatnot. So mine is a repeat recommendation, but it's because Andrew recommended Yellowstone, and then oh. I started watching, and it is so freaking good. So I am re-recommending. I also don't have to come up with something new because I'm not on the recommendation graphic that we post. So (laughs) Um, everyone should watch Yellowstone. It's amazing. The acting is phenomenal. And if you're into sexy cowboys, which I am, uh, you'd really enjoy it. If you have any feedback about today's episode, you can email millennialshow at gmail.com or you can use the contact form or anonymous confessional on millennialshow.com. You can also follow us on social media. Chloe. Do it. Where do people (laughs) follow us on social media? Follow us on social media, Millennial Show on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And then our awesome new TikTok, which is actually at millennial pod we do a lot of fun stuff on there like i just mentioned we have a recommendation graphic where i compile all the recommendations over the course of one month um, so that people can easily find it we do short um, clickbait clips from the show we recently posted um, mickey mouse's statement from (laughs) last episode so go go hang out with us there Um, i respond to messages really quickly um, and i'm always down to talk to y'all so yeah chloe you did amazing today and you're doing amazing daily on our social media channels so thank you so much you're the best I love this community. It's really awesome to be a part of. Yeah. Thank you for letting me be your honorary Gen Z member. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Proud to have you. Thank you, everybody, for listening to today's episode. I'm Andrew. I'm Pamela. And I'm Chloe. Bye, everyone. Bye.